Good morning, good morning everybody. Rye Guy here. We're here at the Fox Mountain Campground here at the uh, Mid Valley ATV Club Rally. It's going to be a two day event. And uh, as you can see, we got a pretty good turnout here. There's already quite a few guys already out in the trail, and there should be more people showing up tomorrow. So hopefully, uh, you guys enjoy this little ride that we got going on here, and uh, we'll see you out in the trail. Yeah, so today I'm traveling with Dean. He's in a, uh, actually, I'm not quite sure what year Razor that is. It's still a fairly new one. Uh, Razor 800. Uh, Sedona rip saws on a 26s. Got, uh, got the uh, Razor S. Uh, either, either it's the Razor S or the Razor XP uh, mud flares on it. And uh, he's got the nice uh, push bar with the. Uh, Two PA lights in the front. Pie A or Pie, whatever they are called. Spotlights. Today's gonna be a gorgeous day around 20, 22 degrees, so it's not too hot. Got a nice breeze blowing. And as you can see, since the last video, everything's greened up here significantly. All these trails, these nice uh, tight trails like this are nice and uh, shady, nice and cool. I like these little uh, two rutted trails like that with a grass strip in the center. This one's a little bit rough, but uh, you get into some of the other trails a little bit further down where there's a lot more sand, a lot more clay, and uh, not so much rocks, and it's just gorgeous to run in. You can do these trails quite quickly, but there's no point in that and uh, not enjoying the scenery. Yeah, it's just off the main road there. Uh, they seem to get this trail for this run well signed. Still got that squeak going on somewhere in the front end. I think it's the uh, top shock bushing. I can hear it every once in a while. You know, one thing too is I know my tie run ends are tight because I replaced them last year and I checked them. I keep checking them. But uh, there's a little bearing for the steering shaft that's getting worn of the bushing down the very bottom where the mount's onto the frame. And I can feel a little bit of vibration in the handlebars. It's not up here because I replaced this bushing, but it's down there. That's a pretty little section here. Oh, yeah. Getting whipped in the face by some leaves. It rained for about two, uh, actually almost, almost the whole freaking week uh, before we came here. So uh, the dust is very minimal today, at least. Might get bad uh, tomorrow with you know, hundred bikes traveling the roads and trucks and jeeps and cars and everything like that too. But it's uh, oh well, you know, you just prepare for it. I got dust mask with me if I need it. I always got my goggles on. Nice can am there behind us. And uh Terex. I'm glad I got up here today. Well the weekend I guess. Glad I got over the weekend. Yeah, no doubt there's gonna be a couple water holes across somewhere along the trail. I know the organizers of these events, I mean, I've, I've organized events too with the uh, Metro District ATV Association. Try not to uh, keep to one style of riding the whole way through. You want to kind of break it up because, I mean, you can't you can't satisfy everybody, but you do what you can, right? You, you mix it up a little bit. You get some tight trails, you get some road running, you get a little bit of mud. If you can find sand, go with the sand for a little bit. Keeps it interesting. The trick is with the two-day event is to try and keep everything fresh for you know the second day, not run the same trails. A little marshy. I bet you there's no mosquitoes in here. <laughs> You know what? There hasn't been that many mosquitoes. The black flies have been hellish this year, but haven't seen too many skeeters. We 
just turned on this trail here. It's called the David Morse Trail. Uh, great big sign up there. It had something to do with the government of Nova Scotia, so I don't know. Probably something to do with the uh, snowmobile clubs out this way too. They're pretty uh, they're they're pretty much dominant when it comes to uh, trail systems around this area. I mean, they they share their you know they share their trails, but like I said before, come winter time, yeah, I wouldn't come near here in a four wheeler. This is all sledding country out this way. Kind of missed it on camera, but there was a. A nice little river we were running beside after we passed that marsh. It was flowing pretty good. Went by a bridge. Didn't want to uh, slow down too too much. Anybody coming up behind me, you know what I mean? Like that's that's one thing about rallies and runs and things like that. That that's kind of neat. That uh, you know you. Unless you want to hang way, way back, you can't really enjoy yourself the way that you want to enjoy yourself sometimes to, to stop and just go 15, 20 kilometers an hour for a trail to uh, enjoy the scenery. But I mean, it, it's fun to get out and just kind of rip around with a whole bunch of guys and, uh, you know, a bunch of ATVers get together and, uh, Especially around the campsite there, you know, do a little bit of beer drinking, do some storytelling, you know, it's always nice to have days and nights like that. Pretty chewed up through here. Sedona rip sauce is just ripping it up. Geez, they throw some mud. I've heard some people complain about those tires that they get plugged up sometimes, but you know what? It depends on where you ride, really. If you're riding in, you know, solid state clay all the time, then yeah, any tire is going to get plugged up in that. It's like peanut butter. But uh, around here, you know, any of the clay that we have, uh, it's usually mixed with silt. So it kind of cleans out the tires a little bit better. Unless you're doing some really, really hardcore mud note this way. Uh, really anywhere in Nova Scotia, you really don't need too, too an aggressive a tire. Just with, you know, the delay of the land, right? It's like anywhere, you're riding the dunes, you're going to need a specific tire for the dunes. You're riding in here, well, it's, there's a multitude of trails that you can take, so you need a multi-purpose tire. To me, there's there's no point in running around on silverbacks or running around on, uh, you know, mudzillas if all you're going to be doing is this type of trail running. Then you're just beating yourself and beating your bearings out. You know, I, I'm running with uh, Mudlight XLs. That's an okay tire. Uh, I find them a little bit weak in the sidewalls, but I don't know. I'm not probably not going to buy these tires again. <coughs> There's so many tires out there, and I've been looking at different sizes and styles and things like that. I don't think I'm going to go over a 27 inch, but I definitely want something maybe a little bit more aggressive because I mean I set my bike up for mudding anyway, but I need something that's not going to beat the crap out of myself or my bike. So I've been looking at the uh, STI uh, Mud Tracks tire. We had a fella who put quite a lot of kilometers on his set. And he got, the, you know, they seem to wear well, so that's good. Except he had them in uh, 25s. I think I might go with a set of 26s, but I'm not going to go with a set of 12-inch uh, wide the rear. I'll just stick with 11s. Out how many people are actually here today? Kind of a tight little crawly section here. Big Terex four. Big four door. Might as well buy a Jeep. I mean, they look nice. 
and they're great for carrying a family with you, but whew, what a what is a Suzuki Samurai without the heater or radio. I'm in low gear now, but I didn't, I'm still not four wheel drive, just kind of crawling in two. Yeah. I personally like this kind of running. Wow, I was a surprise to turn around there was a leaf in my face. <laughs> oh, that kind of dropped in there pretty quick. See if I can get this Terex coming through it. in the throttle. Dean's a good driver there. Like I said, I don't know if his bike is lifted. Oh, yes it is. I see the spacers. And I think that's a rubber down kit. Yes it is. I recognize the spacers from Nick's bike. So there you go. There's another rubber down kit that's uh, installed. I, like I said, man, I think they make the best lifts. So I, I really promote them. So triple www.rubberdowncustoms.com. There you go. Free advertisement. Very, very easy to deal with. Well, I guess this is the brake spot. There's only a couple people that are here. That's oh, a nice view of the valley down there. Now how can you beat this for scenery? These trails are gorgeous. We've only gone about 20k. I was trying to turn the camera on for the muddy stuff. Sideways. What a great blended trail so far. There's good there's so many there's so many open fire roads out this way that you know, you really have to branch off and explore by yourself or, you know, with a buddy of yours, but I'm really impressed with the uh, the way that they got this set up so far. Right here in the power lines. Power lines out this way aren't as bad as some of the rocky uh, rocky trails out home, but I mean, it's still rocky. It seems like no matter where you go, they all look the same. <laughs> I thought we were going to go straight there for a minute. Man, I can't get over how gorgeous of a day it is. Got a Razor XP 900 behind us. Those things are some freaking wide width of a Jeep. Whoa, jeez. You see that branch flying there. Oh, what a gorgeous little trail this is. We just passed a lake, too, on the right-hand side. I'm not quite sure what it was. I don't have my GPS turned on, but... I'm just basically following the arrows here today, but nice uh, sun shining pretty bright right on the lake. It was uh, pretty crystal -y. In fact, I think that's where we're headed is a lake called uh, Crystal Lake or Crystal Lake Falls or something like that. It's 
what I heard uh, at the uh, registration booth this morning. Hit the brakes. So we're back in the woods, coming off the 101 there. Like I said before, I try not to uh, record too much of the road run. And actually, we went quite a ways away. We went uh, almost 12 kilometers on the roadway there. About 73.1 now. Brought this in low. Don't necessarily need four-wheel drive, but I got players Ranger up ahead, man. That's like a truck. It's got full doors, windshield, back windshield. That's gotta be hot running in that today, I'll tell you. Especially going through this technical stuff where you're working the bike a little bit. Ooh, it's a big tree that's down. Growing right on top of uh, granite. That's been down for a while. Bridge load thousand pounds. Well, gee, some of these side by sides are heavier than that. That's a nice, uh, nice little spot here. facing the wrong way. Yep. Now we're into the crawly stuff. Kick her in four wheel drive just to make sure. Man, what a, lift, what a difference that lift kit makes on those uh, razors. Lady slipper. That's a flower here in Nova Scotia for anybody outside. I can't remember if that's endangered or, or protected or something. I don't know. I thought they were. Ninety four point eight kilometers. We're getting close to the campsite now. I've seen a sign from Berwick. Good thing too, I'm flashing for fuel, but just in case old Betsy up there will take care of that. Oh yeah, there's the uh, turn off of the campground right there. That stop sign. Let's go down there a little bit. Random tire. Way down there leads us straight into the town of Berwick. Well, folks, we're at the uh, end of the journey here back at the campground. We're gonna go get uh, debriefed and draw the uh, last poker hand the poker run. At each checkpoint, you drew a card. Uh, 
get everything squared away and see if we win anything. I don't think so. To be honest with you, I had a crappy, uh, crappy poker hand. Anyway, I hope you fellas enjoyed the run. Uh, thanks for coming along with me. You know, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.